Okay, watch out, welcome back. Right, it's been a long, grueling week at work. No time to get in the garage at all, so let's get these wheels fitted into this bike without further ado. Yay! <laughs> There we go. You can just put a socket on that, twist it, give it a twist that way with your hand, it locks it, and then with that, same time, you should be able to lift it out. Excellent. Now when you do this, you would not believe the amount of emails I get from people saying I've took my front wheel out and I've got a pile of spaces and what order do they go back in? Honestly, take note. When you take your wheel out, take a look down there, you see a spacer, it's thin end towards the fork leg, thick end towards the wheel, that spacer. So when you take the axle out, when it gets to that point, lift her up. Try, if you possibly can, not to let them fall out on the floor. It's not always possible. There's one. Space of that side came out that way, so just kind of orientate that so you can remember it. And that one comes out that way. So it goes in there. Just kind of use your mind, use your brain, memorize it, and then take the wheel out of the way. Right, well, if you're going to spend any time without the bike, without the wheel in, while it's fresh in your mind, put the spacers back on the axle in the orientation they go and in the order in which they go. And then when you come to put it back together, you can even put that through. I'm going to put the wheel in quite quick. You can even put the whole lot, dress it all back up as it was. But if you do that, there's a washer down there on the floor just to grab. Now that, you then can't forget which order it goes in, can you? Simple as that, eh? Even take a photograph of your phone. If you've got a phone that takes photographs. So I haven't. Right, I need the go. disc off this because I'm using my discs and these are on with a uh, star drive that's made from zinc plated steel or Torx bit and they are prone and known to mince out. So I'm not going to use them again and they're all Loctited in. I'm just getting them all broken free. Make sure they're all off. Now I'll strip the disc off because I want to weigh the wheels and see what kind of difference we're making here. Right, I just want to show you something with these as well. These are the standard bolts, the standard factory disc bolts. And using a magnet, you can see that they're not stainless. They are mild steel bolts, zinc plated, and they're already corroding. And just getting them off there started to mince up those torque heads. When you look at these, what we've managed to get is some of these. You can see straight away they're better and they don't stick to a magnet because they are the very best stainless steel. Now I want to make a point about these disc bolts. Don't use anything other than disc bolts for discs. The reason being when you look at a brake disc inside, certainly this brake disc, it has a double recess. So you've got a recess there and then the actual hole itself and the bolt fits in flush like a button bolt but the principle of that bolt mainly is that come in close out there it has a shoulder on there and on the outside and both of those shoulders push on they're designed to go in there and you can only use a disc bolt to hold on a disc if you're putting any new discs on your bike if you're buying Galfa discs or anything else always put disc bolts in. Buy these. These were five pounds odd each. You can pay five, five pounds fifty for disc bolts. I don't know what Triumph charge for these cheese ones that come from the factory. They're not particular they don't have to be particularly strong. There's a surprisingly low torque setting that holds them in. It really 
you don't wind them in hard or anything. You lock tight them in or you thread lock them in, but there's no need to go putting masses of torque on them. I just don't like the fact that they corrode, they're mild steel, and they hold my brake discs on. I like these because they're stainless steel, they won't rust, and they go with the rims, etc. And if you see them on the net for sale at 50 pence each, don't buy them because they'll be shit and they will break and you'll crash and you'll die. This is your brakes, don't cut corners. Five pounds 50 each. So you, you kind of factor that into the job you're doing. 10 bolts, 55 pounds for the bolts. If you're not prepared to pay that, you shouldn't be changing your discs, should you? And yes, you can use them again. You can clean up, if you want to use your old ones, you can clean all that thread lock off there, polish them all up and put them back in and torque them up. They don't get stretched, so they're not particularly stressed. I'll show you the torque setting in a minute. It's surprisingly low. You wouldn't believe how low it is when you torque the disc in. But they must, if they're corroded, be replaced because obviously corrosion eats the strength of the metal. So let's move on. Okay, just a quick one on this. Um, when you get the standard rim, you get this oil seal, which uh, used to cover the speedo drive on the non uh, on the on the carbureted bikes, and all it is is a little standard seal. It's very much like a fork seal, but it's not in under any pressure. There it is, just a little oil seal. Just pop that out. So if you're going to buy a set of these from Doug, then you need that oil seal. Um, on the new rim, this is where it goes, and the reason he leaves them out, that seal goes in there, so I'll just push that in there. The reason he leaves them out is because in there goes your speedo drive on the carburetor bikes, and this doesn't have a speedo drive because this is driven from the front sprocket, I believe, uh, but it's not driven from the wheel anyway. So that, that oil seal, which, just checking around it, is perfect. Just lifts out, like this, get a screwdriver on it, just twist it gently, all the way around it, just lifts out, it's not under any pressure and that will just go in. But I'm just going to clean the edge up and grease it before I push it in uh, with a little bit of rubber lube and that will go in there fine and push that in. But before I do that, I'm going to weigh the wheels because this is one opportunity now I've got to actually see the difference in the weight of the two wheels. Bearing in mind that's a 19 inch rim, so it's, it's bigger. You do it old fashioned way, the old bar from scales. Here we go. It may not be any different because this is a much bigger rim Now that is literally 10 kilos. So that without the disc weighs 10 kilos. That's a 19 inch rim. Uh, this without the disc, so it's like for like, weighs nine. So it's a kilo lighter. That is one kilo, not much, but obviously it's a smaller rim. So there's less rim overall. So the, the material it's made from and the hub is obviously lighter, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to clean up the face of the disc, clean up that seal, and then get all this assembled ready to put, and I'll show you the torque settings. Okay, a little bit of rubber lube around the outside. And just press it down in. It is not an interference fit or anything. It just slips in beautifully. But that little bit of lube on it just means it's not going to snatch uh, or grab on anything and fail to seat. And now right disc on, cleaned up the disc. Now this disc incidentally only goes one way because they're flush on the back and then you have the recesses on the front. And if you've got twin discs on your bike, you have rotation on them in an arrow, so make sure you orientate that. This is a single disc so it can only go one way. And now they rotate round like so. These bolts. A jar of expensive bolts. Yeah, right, absolutely. Okay, thread lock. The most important part, fitting your brakes on, lock them in place. And I'm using this hard soap version. Making this a messy old job, but let's get them all in. Right, here we go, let's torque them up. Now it is, honestly, you wouldn't believe it, but the torque setting for these is 16 pounds feet. Just 16, nothing more. They're a big fat eight mil bolt. I'd have guessed around 28, maybe more, but 16 pounds feet, which is 21 newton meters. Honestly, that is not much, but that's what it is. So that's what you must do it to. One, and then come across, obviously in a star pattern. As much as is possible. 
So you tighten them down in order. And that's it. And the first one just once. That's it. Right, that is it. Now what you do, when you do them up yourself, you feel what, I, what you actually feel in the torque wrenches. You feel them go in, then you feel them stop. Honestly, they stop dead. That's it. And then the torque wrench clicks. Because you've got a solid steel disc into a solid hub on a solid bolt, there's no room for anything to squeeze. There's no gasket to squeeze. There's no rubber seal or anything to squeeze. It's metal to metal to metal. So honestly, 16 is all it needs. The work of keeping them in is done by the thread lock, which is why it's really important. You're going to ask me this, so I'll show you. What I've used in this instance is Loctite 248. Okay, Any decent quality thread lock. I love Loctite products because Loctite products pretty much are the best and they work. And that 248, that's like a little stick. I love these little sticks and stuff rather than the horrible drippy little tubes of five grams. There's 20 grams in there. How much was that? Seven pounds. Seven quid. Seven, seven, six, six, six ninety-nine, isn't it? For mm -hmm. probably four times as much as you get in them dark little tubes that you usually tread on and squirt over the floor. Right, so that wheel is ready to go in. flat of your hand, if you're going to, uh, at any point, if you're going to hit the end of your axle, don't hit it with anything other than the end of your hand. Oh, the problem is here, that's better. <laughs> the wheel's wider, and see it's catching on there. Now there we are, and she's through. Now that's in as far as it goes, and it's washer on, and on top. Front axle. Now the front axle on this is 44 pounds feet, so we're going to do that up first. One on each side. There it is. Okay, I'll check it again at the end. What I've done, I've done this up without doing this up. On this side here, you get the little clamp bolt there. Don't do the clamp bolt up until you've done up the axle. That ensures that the axle is squeezed enough against the bearings to hold it in. If you push, if you put that in, then you can hold it out of line, quite simply. And then lastly, once you've done the axle up, then do up the clamp. And the torque setting for the clamp is 20 foot-pounds, so wind off. All these torque settings are only because we get asked. Many, many times in the past, I would have just done these up by sort of hand and feel. There we go, 20 foot pounds, which is for what it's worth about 26, 27 newtons. Newton meters. And there it is, just here. It's just that little Allen bolt in the bottom there. And that click. Actually, I'm going to do something else there. I get told off all the time. I use copper slip in so many things that I do, and everyone says, oh, but, oh Joe, why don't you use anti seize <laughs> I was going to try and do a cool impression then. anti seize compound, all right? So shut up. There's some anti seize for you. I'm just going to put that on there to stop them seizing in there. Just pop that through. So what I'll do, I'll spread it up the thread so it doesn't all wipe its way off on the lug. And it does two things, the anti seize It prevents, obviously, the bolt from seizing, as it says on the tin. But the other thing it does is it allows the bolt, it lubricates the thread into its seat, which means that when you torque it up, the torque setting on that bolt can be quite low. You don't have to wind them up too tight because there's no resistance as you lubricate a thread into place. It goes in far easier and it bolts up as tightly as it needs to without so much torque. And the torque setting on these is 21 foot-pounds. You see what I've done here, look, Champagne. Basically, I've looked up the torque sensor and stuck them on the headlight. You and you can remember. do that. That's good because I'm, I'm a monkey and I can't remember nothing. But seriously, if you're going to do any job, it doesn't hurt, does it? Go online, look up all the torque settings for all the fasteners you're going to do, and then write them on a piece of paper and stick them on the headlight. Hang on, is it? Right, there we go. 21, what was it? How good's your memory? Yeah, how long was it ago <laughs> since I said that? A goldfish. Yeah, pardon? What's a goldfish? Right. There we go. So, Oops. click, click once, 
click twice. There we are, and again, the two uh, marker paints are where they were before, so that's cool. So you bolt it in quickly, pump that out, obviously. Otherwise, the first <laughs> junction you come to, you'll poo your trousers. Oh. There she is, she's fine. That's it, right, take the tape off, take the sticker off. Dun, dun, dun. Look at the gap. A bit of a gap there, Dell. <laughs> Now what do you propose to do about your mud guard, Del? Well, I think I'm going to leave it. Do you like that? I quite like that. Looks a bit odd. In fact, what I might do with this, I might actually space that up. Put some spaces underneath here and actually lift that a bit higher. I whatever. Kind of, kind of, Come on, we've got whatever. a second anyway, let's to do. Anyway, let's do the back one. Alright, time for the, the big one. The big daddy. Withdraw my long shaft from the rear. Again, if you're not sure where your spacers go, like I said in the first instance, it's quite easy to see. That's the that's the shiny, greasy bit, and that's the dark, dusty bit. So, which obviously which end goes in? And you can reassemble them onto the the axle. Yeah, oh, God, dear me, that is heavy. That's so heavy. Right, there we go. On there, so I know where it is. Okay. First thing we need is the sprocket carrier. I'll take that out with the cush drivers attached. All good. If but the hub's bigger, so let's see what the difference in weight is. We've got a kilo off the front. So that weighs uh, precisely 15. Okay, 15 kilos, undressed. And the new one weighs, feels about the same. Thirteen. So there we are, two Three. kilos. Plus two kilos difference. One on the front. So three kilos difference. It's totally unsprung weight, and it's reciprocating weight as well. So the gyroscopic effect of that big, tall 19-inch front wheel will be lessened by that extra kilo. Kilos a lot of weight. It's not to be sniffed at. You know, you consider that Japanese manufacturers bring out the next year's bike, and they'll spend however many million yen to make the bike half a kilo or half a ounce difference here or there. Honestly, it's a lot of weight. A kilo off the front and two kilos off the back. That is a big difference. So I'm quite chuffed with that. That's it, check the first one again in case snucking those ones down. Secondly, has loosened that one. No, fine. Right, the torque setting on the back is 63 pounds feet, and obviously that's once you've set up the alignment, which I've just got to do still. Just checking the chain run, just look in along the top there. Absolutely perfect. That's a nice gap as well. Should even get a chain guard in there without any issues. And these are torqued up at 30 pounds feet.
Perfect. Okay, rear brake's done up. Make sure they're all pulled out. And finally, chain guard. And we're ready for a wheel outside. Now, there we are. So there we are, finally looking at the top. There was two people, one in particular was quite derogatory, who said that that wheel will not fit. There you go. And it fits just fine. That is a more than safe enough gap. You've got about six mil literally on the chain guard and that's without any modification at all. That's...